What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skip back at it again, and I'm here with my husband. What's going on? How are you doing? Husband? I'm discovering I own more shirts than I remember I owned. You do? Yeah, yeah I have a lot. Jeez. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and satisfied. Today, we are here to watch Casual Geographic. Hey. What is your, what was your favorite animal when you were a kid? I remember when I was a kid and everybody was picking animals they wanted to be and everybody was picking animals like gorillas and sharks. Uh -huh. And I picked a giraffe. Why? I just thought it was cool. Like I thought it was a cool <laughs> animal. People were like, I want to be a rhinoceros, a T-Rex. And right. I was like, giraffe. Do you want to know what my favorite I animal don't. was? I think it's, I think we probably have the weirdest answers to this question for a kid that you could probably think of. So my situation was very similar to yours. You were homeschooled, it was nothing like mine. So this situation was similar to yours. Yeah, yeah. So far as uh -huh. us interacting with other children of similar age. Okay. <laughs> as people do when they go to public school. You phrased that like a homeschooled person <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> so we're pretending to be animals. And this one girl said that she was, I don't know, some a tiger. And oh. another boy said he was something else. And I had just recently read about an animal in a book, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm a kinkajou. The fuck is a kinkajou? <laughs> or kinkajou. What's a kinkajou? So it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, maybe feline-esque thing with a prehensile tail, you know? Why are you using so many big words to describe what it is? Just be like rat, monkey, fish. Okay, look, I'll show you. Okay, I was wrong about it being a feline, but it does have a prehensile tail. You could tail. have used rat, monkey, feline, or fish to describe <laughs> this. The point is, uh -huh. for years and years, I maintained that a king, however you say that word. Kinkajou is fine. Kinkajou, mm -hmm. maybe not that, uh, was my favorite animal. Not a kinky Jew. <laughs> Kinkajou. That's, you know, don't make it. The title of today's video is 10 Animals You Definitely Forgot Existed. Okay. I hope that Kinkajou is on the list. That's a very good guess. I'm super excited to see what this video has in store for us, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hi. What am I looking at? Oh, oh, okay, it's a very blurry video. Oh! <laughs> Quick question, what do you think is the most popular animal in the world? Cat. Well, I was curious, yeah. and after extensive research, Easy. I found a map. A world map that used Google Keyword Planner and cross-reference searches for 170 different Hippo. animals across 180 countries to determine the most loved animal in each country. Okay. That's a manta ray? There's a it place did. on Earth that people are like, but manta rays is the <laughs> shit, dog. <laughs> Fuck cats, dogs, penguins? Are you kidding me? I'm nah, I want a gigantic manta ray. <laughs> Big manta rays. <laughs> For example, oh. monkeys won over Australia. Pandas have Indonesia in a chokehold. Oh, and apparently my mother country of Senegal loves hippos. Oh. No comment huh. on that. But you want to know what the overwhelming huh. favorite was? The runaway winner was, by far, the tiger, with 44 countries riding for Okay, them. all right. That's respectable. That makes sense. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Me, you, and eight-year-old me are on the same page. It's just a giant cat. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The cats but cooler. And it's pretty. Right. And, but, and, but like and also got, dangerous. And they got tooed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Real sassy. Yeah. Number two with 28 countries were hippos, proving Why? that you gotta be famous to be here. infamous. These were the top 10 animals according to this map. Okay. It's pause. cool. Okay. All right. Moses. We have tigers, mm -hmm. whales, because y'all are suckers. Y'all have been freaking bamboozled by the PR campaign for whales. Uh, you said that, and then dolphins are on the list. So you're going to have to eat your <laughs> I, words. I wasn't finished, okay? <laughs> we haven't gotten there yet. There's also Mises. Mooses is okay? what I said. Hippopotamuses. On the bottom right, is that a... Uh, is that an elephant, or did we just take the picture at a weird time? It is a heffalump, yes. Okay. Uh, then there's uh, Mighty Joe Young. Yeah, okay. good, good one. What the hell is... Oh, uh, sea Manatee. cows. Got yeah. it. Okay. Seek I'm pretty out. sure that's a manatee. And then penguinos, of Fish course. Fish birds. Of course. And then, of course, the lion with the mane at the bottom right. <laughs> it's actually a really solid list. 
but it's not perfect. The lion is a national animal for 19 different countries, mm -hmm. a record, but they just barely made the top 10. Interesting. But then this got me thinking, what about all those animals that don't get what nearly the enough hell talk is time? That? Well, this video is for them. Here's 10 okay. animals you either that did. That looks like a Pokemon. There's a Pokemon that looked like that, bro. <laughs> what the hell? No existed, forgot about, or that my personal bias, which we talked about more. And starting off is the maned wolf. Yes. It's one it's of those huge. animals whose name does nothing for it, since it's not a wolf, not a fox, or even a Latin coyote in black knee highs. Apparently, they're just themselves, and they are literally built different. They're tall enough to look down on some Great Danes, but at about 50 pounds soaking wet, they're more in the weight class of a basset hound. How you can dwarf Scooby yet get bodied by Snoopy's depressed cousin is unconscionable. And virtually every picture of a maned wolf looks AI generated. It's a genetically sequenced identity crisis, so it's only right that it sounds like one. Whoa. Stop that. Is it a roar? Is it a bark? Is it a cry for help or the damnation of a higher being? Nobody knows. Damn. Not even him. Also, you probably heard that the main wolf smells like Snoop Dogg salad. This is 100% true. In fact, they've even gotten some zoos raided by police looking for cannabis. Where would I have heard that? Nice. What? He's like, oh, you've probably heard. I'm like, what trivia? What kind of trivia is that? You know, the groups of people he hangs out with are very animal forward. They all start spouting facts about this animal to each other. We're just sitting here like, I've never even seen this thing before. I understand that you and Lindsay Nicole yeah. have heard right. of this fact before. Yeah. But maybe for the rest no, of he's us. He's calling his mom. Hey, you heard about that uh, thing? Look like a Great Dane wolf oh mix. Oh, God. He's like, of course. <laughs> Smells like cannabis. <laughs> But all they found was a candid mid-piss. If the canine ah. family had a cookout, this ginger still puppy would be the one pulling up with veggie burgers. Most of a Maine wolf's grocery list includes fruits and veggies, with okay. Lobera, aka the wolf's apple, getting its name from this portrait mode fox constantly eating it. They also made history as the first wild animal to be successfully treated through stem cell therapy after one got hit by a truck. Wow. All in all, okay. I think they're pretty cool. I'd call them a dog that can't dog, but that's more accurate for the raccoon dog. Another animal you probably forgot existed. I did, Most people actually. know about them from two things, the Tsunuki yeah. suit from Mario and their role in Japanese mythology as the Bake Dunuki. Mm -hmm. And due to certain aspects of that myth and the fact that I'd like to stay monetized, that's all I'm gonna say about them. Okay. Cause unlike them, I don't have the balls to test guidelines. <laughs> raccoon dogs aren't even remotely related to raccoons and basically stole their entire flow through convergent evolution. Damn. They're canines, meaning they sit at the same lunch table as wolves, dogs, and coyotes. What? But their closest cousins are foxes. Which reminds me, close your eyes. There's no jump scare coming, I swear. This will okay. be fun, just, just close sure. it real quick. Okay. All right, everyone ready? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Duck. Geese. That's That sounded like duck geese, right? What did it sound like to you? <laughs> I was looking. Well, I didn't care if you're looking. I know you cheat, but I just want to know, you know, what is it? Um, it sounded like birds, yeah. You know how I know my wife's eyes were open? What? Give me one guess. I'll give you a second. Just one second. Because that's how she kisses me. I close my eyes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a bunch nope. of them. Yes. All together. Yes. I thought the growling was there, that they were growling no. at geese. No. That was them growling at each other. That's, they growl and then honk back. That's just how they make noise. Boy, that's weird shit. They're like, what up, Jackie? What up? Like, bro, why are you doing the weird noises? Like, you can make them. That doesn't mean you should. That was not the sound of two clowns with marital issues. That was what a raccoon dog roll call sounds like. You see what I mean by the whole dog that can't really dog properly thing? They're the only canines that hibernate. Seriously, they're the only one. They're that special. They can also climb trees, because of course they can. Course. They're willing swimmers, because sounds about right. And they may or may not have been responsible for a certain virus putting the world on timeout. But yeah. considering the war crimes <laughs> committed against them for their fur, I'm willing to look past it. So, uh -huh. you hate raccoons. Yeah. You're well known to be racist against raccoons. Yeah. But. What? Do you like? It's not a raccoon. Raccoon dog. It's not a raccoon. It's literally a dog. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. That's so you I'm... wouldn't look at that raccoon dog and, and they... immediately punt it. I mean, I would like twitch, criminal, criminal, but then I see it's a dog. Go, all right, I let it go. <laughs> How would you, you tell the difference between that? and Oh, I don't raccoon. know. Maybe the fucking honking. <laughs> <laughs> 
There is no looking past this oh ET God. looking at it. This is a Saiga, and that is 100% unfiltered. They yeah. really do look like Star Wars oh in the face. Yeah. That sizable schnoz piece is designed to filter out the dust kicked up by a herd that used to be million strong. Mm. It's like a built-in respirator that also makes them look like Alf's illegitimate child. Wow. I realize that's a dated reference, so here's Alf, and no, here's the Saiga. No, I know who, Alf, know who Alf, is. Alf is. You see it too, right? Now you might be wondering, can that nose be used to amplify mating calls and increase their chances Why of females to sexually that? select for bigger noses? And you're absolutely right, they do use their noses to amplify mating calls and increase their chances with females who sexually select for bigger noses. Because size queens come in many forms. You know what uh, You know what it is? He's socializing us. <laughs> He's like trying to like drag us in. Yeah. You know, because we like him. Right. You know what I mean? Like we want to be a part of like his thing. Eligible bachelors will run fades with each other using those horns in order to gain control of a harem. The female validation, eligible bachelors will run fades with each other using those horns in order to gain control of a harem. <laughs> Unfortunately, those horns can get them laid and laid to rest, since scientists have been victims of poaching and that and disease, oh and Habitat oh, yeah, Loss nearly has this Narnia goat's entire population in the gulag. Today, they're critically endangered and found only Shit. one place in the world, in the dry grasslands and semi-deserts of Central Asia. Okay. But that's too depressing, so here's a baby saiga. Now here's two baby saigas, <laughs> but you want to know what's even more depressing? There's a good percentage of the population that doesn't realize that narwhals are real. Yeah, we, we didn't make those up. They really do be yeah. out here swimming Wait, in the who ocean, they were causing fake? a commotion, because they're just so awesome. It's an aquatic unicorn, except that horn is actually a giant inside out tooth yeah. with millions of nerve endings. We used to think that narwhals use this single tooth overbite for violence, but with how sensitive it is, it's much more likely that it just tells the whale about the world around it, similar to cat whiskers. Okay. Also, that tooth is flexible and they can bend it a foot in any direction, and I didn't really? even know that until this video. One reason we don't know more about them is because narwhals are painfully shy introverts that can legitimately get flatlined by panic attacks. When narwhals get pressed or stressed, their heart rates will slow all the way down to three to four oh beats a minute. A slow heart rate is great for swimming in ice water all day, but a heart deciding to work part time while you're fighting for your life is a good way to see the gates. Yeah. And with a crippling fear of people, human interaction can put nature's anxiety whale on life support. But even this high strung struggle cetacean has an unlikely friend. In 2016, scientists noticed a male narwhal traveling with a pod of beluga whales and ever since then, uh -oh. they've watched him run with the belugas like he was one of their own. But there's a good chance this is more than just a friend situation. Because Narluga isn't a ship name, it's the result of a beluga and a narwhal hooking up and creating a hybrid. I'm so which sorry. they can't do, since somehow an eternal extrovert and a whale with a literal self-destruct setting for social interaction are related. I don't want to hear none of y'all talking about, oh, I have social anxiety, I'm an introvert, would you die? Would you die if you had to be around other people? There's like four people right now just like shaking like, do I even tell her yes? In the, and I, like, I know that you're out there struggling to admit it. I see you. <laughs> Stay in the background, it's okay. Speaking of related, you know how I said the main wolf isn't actually a wolf or a fox? Mm -hmm. Well, I can give you a hundred tries. You'll never guess this deer dog's closest canine. Okay. Deer dog's closest canine? Okay. Closest canine companion? Compatriot? Compadre? Uh... <laughs> Just had like a moment there. It's so like it's like a word stroke. <laughs> it's like it's gotta get it out. Okay. Um, um just give one guy, you said you'll never guess it. Come on. Uh, I don't know. Governor go with Billy Goat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Going weird. Cousin. And that's because it's an animal a lot of y'all probably didn't even know existed. And that would be the South American bush dog. Yep. Even though I'm they so look sorry. like that game of 5'11 no versus idea. 6 foot. We all have that brother, sister, or cousin we swear stole height from us. Evidently, the main wolf <laughs> took all the legs in the family and turned the bush dog into an ankle biter. Damn. I can only make this joke so many times, but if you took one look at them and thought they were a wolverine or an undercooked that's bear or even a yeah. really confused Tasmanian devil, that's nobody what I would thought. blame you. Especially since for a while, we thought this weasel beagle went extinct. Distinct. It took a few years for us to realize they didn't get discontinued and even longer to put them in the canine club. Bush dogs live in packs and are kind of like the African wild dogs of the Amazon. But instead of running prey down on land, bush dogs would rather ambush ops in water, which they're really good at thanks to webbed feet, their ability to dive, but most importantly, the power of friendship. Mm, they usually go funny. for small rodents, birds, lizards, and the occasional capybara. Oh, but bush dogs have been damn. on record murking a taper after chasing it around for hours. What? The same taper that can weigh about two prime shacks at nearly 700 Jesus. pounds. Yeah, the power of friendship. Finding one bush dog, let alone a whole pack, is veteran level difficult. Okay. But if you happen to be walking through the jungle and smell salad, you might just get lucky because the scent signature they mark their territory with gives a strong impression of vinegar. How would you, how would you tell the difference oh, in a fucking jungle, I bro? Don't know. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That is distinct white vinegar that my mom cooks with. Also, clearly, does it have allergies? 
If I walk around in the jungle, <laughs> my nose is going to be stuffed the fuck up. <laughs> I right. can't smell Touché. nothing, bro. Like... <laughs> But since they can fold a several hundred pound horse cow, luck might not be the right word. You need more than luck to catch this cat. The clouded leopard is so secretive is and so cool. introverted that we honestly don't know a whole lot about them. We do know that they easily earn gold medal for tree climbing, even for a cat. They can rotate their ankles 180 degrees, which means unlike what? most other cats, clouded leopards can climb down a tree head first. They'll even cross a branch upside down for no other Look reason but to flex. In fact, their entire existence is a flex. It's widely believed that this overcast kitty diverged from the common ancestor of the panther and cats up to 9 million years ago. Not only does that make them the most ancient species of cat alive today, it also makes them a living fossil. You see, on the left is the skull of a clouded leopard, mm -hmm. and on the right is the headpiece of Smilodon, aka a prehistoric yeah. predator of the saber tooth wow. variety. In fact, clouded leopards often get called the modern day saber tooth because they have the longest canine teeth of any cat that is relative cool. to body size. That's longer than lions, tigers, and, and even the Caymus prowess demon, okay. the jaguar. Also, despite its name, it's not technically a leopard, and while you could call it the smallest of big cats, scientists widely believe that the clouded leopard is actually the link between big cats and small cats. Oh, big cats referring to lions, okay. tigers, jaguars, leopards, and snow leopards, which also aren't even real leopards either, mm -hmm. and small cats being the rest, like cheetahs, pumas, ocelots, and of course domestic cats. Kitty. Also, it's not really a size thing, it's more like... Like, big cats can roar but can't purr, and small cats can purr but can't roar. Clouded leopards can't do either, instead they do this. <laughs> he sounds like something from the Jungle Book. Yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like a voice actor yes. making a sound. Yeah. That made sense. I feel like that got complicated. And it gets even no. more complicated with you? this next animal. Because what do a manatee, a dugong, and an elephant all have in common? They end up existed. at the same family reunion as the rock hyrax. What? That's right, this African what? boulder gerbil, this marmot from the motherlands, is cousins with the biggest thing on earth with legs. What? Okay, you are testing our amount of trust in you. Yeah, my suspension of disbelief is it, it, not it's suspending wavering. right now. It's okay? wavering. You know, we implicitly trust some channels <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. And, our, and all of our animal channels were like that. Like oh, yeah, Frank, of Lizzie course. Nicole, Casual Geographic's on that list now. Absolutely. And this is the first time I'm like, I'm literally going to Google this when I'm done. Literally? Literally. The Hyrax is also clade mates with aardvarks, elephant shrews, and tenrix. How? It makes right. less sense the harder you think about right. it. Right. Although in their defense, Hyraxes have the same tusks that elephants do, but like with the main wolf and the what bush dog, saying? someone had to get the short end. And did they ever. Hyraxes also can't really control their body temperature, despite that being oh. one of the first rules of being a mammal. So to fight the fact that nature made them as close to cold-blooded as a mammal can get, mm -hmm. Hyraxes spend most of their time basking in the sun. Got it. I used to think they were just chill like that, but apparently chill is exactly what they're trying to avoid. Also, they make a sound that's almost a guaranteed trip to therapy if you ever hear it in person. Okay. I'm not going to do this for every animal, but I couldn't not add this. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, this is the one. <laughs> oh my god. Also, you can absolutely do that for every animal. Right, I would not mind at all. It's one of the iconic things of Pokemon Pokedex entries is yeah. that it does the cry every time you hit the button. Yeah. And it helps us contextualize like what it is that we're looking at. This thing has more in common with mammoths than it does with hamsters. I want that to sink in. And the only thing arguably more unbelievable than that is whales and dolphins being the closest living relatives of hippos. Yeah. At this point, nothing really needs to be said. Yeah. We all know hippos are homicidal demon pigs with the temperament of a lamb. Yep. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're only Google famous the same way Logan Paul was back in 2017. Yeah. I know you know. But what a lot of people don't know is the tiny travel size version that lives yes. today. The pygmy hippo is five times smaller and half as tall as their murderous cousins. They're also one. forest animals, solitary and naturally shy, and they're much less of a threat to humanity. Just don't go and tell them that. You know, this one's name is Sweet Pork. I'm not even making that up. Like basically Sweet every pork. other animal, they can be on demon timing if you push them enough. But clearly the aquatic oppression horse stole all their ill will, because no shot could you slap one dead in the face and not end up dead with no trace. Huh. Well, I'm not afraid of it when I'm wrong. Now, you've definitely heard of this next animal before. It's just that the last time you probably did, Chris Rock and Jada Smith were on speaking and not slapping terms. Damn. And Funny. of course, we're talking about Madagascar's top predator and the bane to lemurs everywhere, the Fusa. Although uh, with its I spelling, I'm pretty sure yeah. it's actually Fossa, but the day I pronounce it like that is the day I lay my childhood to rest. The Fusa is pretty much a Madagascar mongoose. 
And if you know how psychotic mongoose are, you'll understand why the lemur population treated them like terrorists. But one thing I never realized because of the movie is they're not that much bigger than the lemurs they eat. Mm -hmm. And they have the same flexible exorcist ankles as the clouded leopard, meaning trees that are pretty cool. much their home court. Especially since they have tails longer than a Monday to keep balance. <laughs> Fusas also have, I'm gonna say, interesting mating practices. And once again, I want to stay monetized, so I'm not gonna step in that mic. Okay. Fam, just know that if you follow a female Fusa long enough, you might not hear the choo-choo, but you will see a train. And while it's usually <laughs> lemurs taking the L as apex predators, this monkey cat murks anything that doesn't cook them first. Sometimes they'll even work together with one climbing a tree to scare prey onto Ooh. the ground where the partner can retire their will to live. Not bad. Also, I know you see that flex. Yeah. But there's no bigger flex than this next animal soloing the US Navy. Okay. Back in the 70s, what? US nuclear submarines were forced to fall back after they took damage to the rubber neoprene layer covering the sensitive sonar domes. This compromised their navigation, and at first people were rushing to the conclusion that the commies had gotten one over on them. Mm -hmm. What actually happened was that out of the over 500 species of sharks, the US Navy managed to get griefed by one of the smallest. The cookie cutter shark is only about a foot and a half, and these giant killers feed on some of the biggest animals in history for a living. I'm vicious! I'm dangerous! Fear me! But he's like this tall. Yeah, but he's out here eating like, he's out here eating submarines. He's proving it. He's just as mean as he thinks he is. <laughs> they got their name because this Look parasite was- him. Look at him! Oh my god! <laughs> They got their name because this parasite will swim up to a whale and then use its jaws to slice at a perfectly circle shaped piece of flesh. It doesn't kill them, but the sea hickey it leaves behind is for life. It's like a parasite tramp stamp. And it's not just whales, anything from seals to killer whales to even other sharks can get it. On rare occasions, even some humans find out the bitey way. In the 80s, up to 30 US submarines allegedly took damage from the cookie cutter's dental. Wow. To the point where the only solution was a fiberglass coating. We always talk about great whites, tiger sharks, bull sharks, but None of them can say they successfully committed hit and runs on a superpowers That's name. Right. With a resume like that, they definitely deserve to get talked about Absolutely. more. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. If you learned something that's from this cool. video, kindly consider Look checking out my tiny. book, 100 Animals That Can Effing End You. That is so cool. Very, very fun. How oh, long? Oh man. How long do we have to be married mm -hmm. before you get me a pygmy hippo? Right. That's a. Uh... Hey man, this was such a good video. <laughs> I just think that there are so many levels to his content. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got so many different versions of himself that we get to see. Right. And he's so expressive in this kind of content, even though it's just fact content. Yeah. And it, it really draws me in. Yeah, that's. I think that's an excellent observation. And you know, um, I just want to like piggyback off of that. I'm just wondering, how long do we have to be married before you get me a pygmy hippo? Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think that when he started out his career, he showed us his range, uh -huh. you know, yeah. and he had so much turbulence to go through to get where he's at. Mm -hmm. But when he finally birthed out of his cocoon, um, you know, his proboscis was flailing and we all were like, whoa, what's that, bro? But now finally we get it and we, we can trust him enough, you know, to proboscis at, at will. Well, using what you just said mm -hmm. as a jumping off point right. and circling back, right. how long do yeah. we have to be married before you find me a big me hippo? Well, I think it's about time we close the loop on that. <laughs> so we'll see you guys in the next vid. Thanks, Kitten Slovakia, for having me on. And I'll holler at you guys later. I <laughs> we're okay, we're done with the corporate speak. I hope you guys enjoyed that at least half as much as we did because if you enjoyed it half as much as we did, then you enjoyed it at least two times as much as somebody who sucks did. Okay. You know? Well. You're well, better than everybody else. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying like, to communicate. Oh, <laughs> what you? Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, hope biscuits. It's Skittin' Lit.